is the Lord and worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. We greet you in the name of our Lord this morning, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We thank you for joining with us this morning. Another worship experience by way of internet, uh, 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 by phone, whichever way you have chosen. We thank God for you. Uh, we you are now in tune to Union United Methodist Church, 1203 Pine Street in Belmar, Maryland, where yours truly, James L. Young, is the pastor. Our, we ask that you would mute your phones, if you will, to... Uh, that we might not have as much interference. Our seven words this morning, is what if we live in a constant state of preparation for something great to happen? What if you truly believe God's reign of justice will come? Amen. Amen. At this time, we have the lighting of the third Advent candle by Sister Jackie Duncan, after which a music minister. I will be lighting, I will be reading and lighting the shepherd candle, or the candle of joy. The angel sang a message of joy, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people, for all of the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. S suddenly, suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor, his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I've been reading Luke, second chapter, verses 7 through 15.
Christ the Savior is born. It was a silent night, a holy night. Yes. Praise God. Let us pray. <laughs> o thou in whose presence my soul takes delight, on whom in affliction I call, my comfort by day, my song in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. He looks at 10,000 of angels rejoice and merits wait for his word. He speaks and eternity fills with his voice. He echoes the praises of the Lord. Oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Our shelter in the time of our storm and our eternal home. Most gracious God, we come this morning just as humble as we know how. Asking, oh God, that you would forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That you will renew a right spirit within us. That we might be the people you are calling for in these last and evil days. God, we know that the enemy is running to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. God, we thank you that we have a master. We have someone that sits high yet looks low and feels the infirmity and the pain of his people. And because you love us so, we believe, oh God, that you will lift up a standard against any enemy. And that you will hold back the hand of the enemy. Not only hold back the hand, but you'll destroy the hand. So God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, oh God, for last night's lying down. And, oh God, you touched us this morning with the finger of you love, grace, and mercy. You dispatched it over our house. God, we're not bragging or anything, but we're just being thankful, oh God, that you looked beyond our fault and you saw our needs and you blessed us anyhow. So God, we come this morning with grateful hearts and thanking you, oh God, that our sheets were not our cooling board and our bed was not, our sheet was not our wrapping sheet and our beds were not our cooling board, but you touched us anyhow and you woke us this morning. And when we looked around in our household, we saw that everything was intact. We thank you, God, because we know, God, that had it not been for your grace and your mercy, the enemy would have had a field day with our house. But God, we thank you this morning for your blessings. We thank you this morning for your grace and for your mercy. Even in a time like this, God, we still offer up thanks unto you because you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we can say thank you, Lord, because we realize that had it not been for the Lord that was on our side, Oh, God, we would not be here this morning under the sound and hearing each other's voice. But we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for safe tra traveling. We thank you, oh, God, for food, shelter, and rain. And, oh, God, you've been so good to us, God. And, oh, God, we know that now those, God, that are around us and all around us are that are suffering this morning. Oh, God, somebody didn't wake up, woke up this morning, but didn't have anything to eat. And somebody woke up and didn't have an appetite this morning. Oh, God, but you blessed us anyhow. Oh, God, you gave us an appetite. You gave us eyes to see and ears to hear. And 
Oh God, in a voice is speaking. God, we thank you this morning. Oh God, we pray for us. God, for those that are less fortunate than we, God. Oh God, those that are out now, oh God, in harm's way, God. We pray, oh God, for those in the nursing homes and the convalescent homes and in the hospitals all around the world, God. Oh God, we know that you are now present, you're everywhere, that you can be everywhere at the same time. So God, we pray, God, right now that you would touch, heal, and deliver. And that you would bind it. the hand of the enemy would be bound up. Oh God, for you gave us the authority. Oh God, you told us that anything we would bind on this earth would be bound in heaven. So God, we bind the hand of the enemy this morning. Oh God, we bind the hand of, oh God, of COVID-19 right now, God, in the name of Jesus, running rapid in our land. We bind it, oh God. Oh God, for we realize that there is nothing new under the sun, oh God. Oh God, but you have given us the strength, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for the strength. Oh God, well, we might be able to go on just a little while longer to see what the end will be, God. Bless the doctors and the nurses, God. Oh God, bless the policemen, oh God. Walk in the beat, God. Oh God, bless those, oh God, uh, oh God, that are out there, God, and don't even have a place to stay. The homeless, God. Uh, oh God, bless them and keep them, God. Oh God, we lift up the bereaved family this morning, God. Oh God, those that have lost loved ones uh, all over the land. So much death, God. Oh God, touch, heal, and deliver, God. Touch bodies right now. Touch emotions right now, Lord. Oh God, heal as only you can do, God. Oh God, we pray, oh God, for a, 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 a mighty healing, God, over your people, God, that are suffering, God. Oh God, from the loss of loved ones. Someone lost a mother, a daughter. Oh God, a father, a son, God. A dear friend, God, we pray, oh God, that you would, oh God, bring, a, oh God, relief right now, God. Oh God, let them know, God, that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Oh God, let them know, God, that we may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Oh God, we don't know when that morning will come, but oh God, according to your word, God, we stand on your word and we believe your word, God. Oh God, that joy will come. So God, we pray right now, God, that you would order our steps in your way and in your word. Oh God, bless us here at Union, God. Oh God, bless our, oh God, the members here. Oh God, the ones that are under the sound of my voice and those, oh God, that are listening. Oh God, by way of conference call and the internet, God. Oh God, touch, oh God, heal and deliver, God. Oh God, touch right now, God, those that are sick, God. Those that are feeling bad, God. Oh God, there's so many, God, I can't even think to call their name, God. But Holy Ghost, do your work, God. Holy Ghost, power, reach out, God, and touch, heal, and deliver, God. Oh God, we bind the enemy right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Oh God, with your people, God. Let not the enemy steal their joy, God. Oh God, let them always be reminded, oh God, that the joy of the Lord is their strength. Oh God, and that we have come this far by faith, leaning and depending on you. And we don't believe that you brought us this far to leave us now. Oh God, we lift up our denomination, God, this morning, God. Oh God, we lift up every Methodist church, God. Oh God, every religious organization, God. Oh God, claiming the name of Jesus Christ, God. We lift them up before you, God, this morning, God. Oh God, that you would strengthen them in a mighty way. Touch our bishop, God. Touch our district superintendent, God. Oh God, be with our laity, God. Oh God, be with our clergy all over the land, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Have your way, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise this morning. Oh God, for your omnipresence, presence, God. Oh God, we thank you, God, for this time of the year where we can celebrate God. Oh God, where we remember, God, what you did for us. Oh God, through your son Jesus, son. how he came into the world. Oh God, flesh and blood and suffered and died, God. Oh God, but now is seated, God, at your right hand, interceding on our behalf, God. We give you glory, God, and we thank you, God. And when we have done all that is assigned to our hands, God, and we can't do any more, God, when we shall stick our swords in the sands of time and we study war no more, we pray, God, that you give us a resting place anywhere in your kingdom, God. Oh, God, anywhere we'll be satisfied, Lord. But Job declared that the wicked would cease from troubling and our weary souls will be at rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
life feels us many, 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 many different ways. But I thank God for Blanche Palmer, who was my grandmother, who taught me what God was and what prayer is. And that's what sustains me today. And all that we're going through with this virus and of our illnesses, God is yet good. Yes, he is. He is so good. Yes, he is. We can still see his mercy. Yeah. And I thank God for mercy. Yeah. Mm. You all continue to pray for me and my family, as I do for yours, as I pray for my community, my neighborhood, my yeah. workplace, for us all, Lord, because we need him in this day and time. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy meat and mind. New life. New hope. He brings. Hallelujah. We thank God. For Jesus, we thank God for Sister Deshera yes. this morning coming and sharing with us her gift. Yes. We thank God for her this morning. Yes. At this time, we're going to ask if Sister Ebony Parker will come and give us our scripture lessons, after which we'll have another musical by the choir. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All this the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. good. The two Amen. scriptures I'll be reading is Psalms 126, verses 1 through 6. And then I will be going to Job chapter 8, verse 21. And they're both from the King James Version. Amen. Psalms 126, 1 through 6. Amen. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Job chapter 8, verse 21. Till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
depend on. You put them in office. You thought you could depend on. You voted for such and such. You thought you could depend on. It is so competent to know that there is one that you can depend on. There is one that will not change, that does not change, and you can depend on him. And his name is Jesus. All other fail, you can depend on him. It's good to know, my brothers and sisters, that you can depend on God. No matter where you might find yourself. What circumstance, what situation you might find yourself in. In your pain, in your hour of suffering, in your bereavement hours. Whatever it is you're going through. That you can depend on God. That he's right there with you. Because he said he would never leave you. Nor forsake you. That he would be right there with you. And he's not a man. He's not a God that will lie. If he said it. You can count on it. So you can depend. On God. We thank choir we thank brother nick for that for sharing that testimony with us letting us know that we can depend on god we give honor to god again this morning and thank god for all that he is and all that he is doing and all that he has done and all that he is going to do. We give him thanks this morning. Our scripture lesson that you heard uh, Sister Ebony read this morning 
coming from Psalm 126 and uh, Job 8 and 21. For a title I have chosen, he has done great things. Praise God, he has done great things. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. You ought to tell somebody he has done great things. He has done great Not things. only has he done great things, but he is doing great things. And if you trust him, he will do even greater things. Hallelujah. He has done great things. His power not only releases us from sin's captive hold. You know, you know, no, sin can, can can have you all bound up and 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 hold you captive. But his power brings us back to him after he has released us from the hold of sin. Psalm 126 is a psalm of degree. The author is anonymous and probably writing while in exile. And I know that there are are witnesses this morning that when you're in exile or when you're all alone, you can begin to think on the great things that God has done. You begin to reminisce and think about the great things that he is doing in your life at the present. So the book of Psalm is songs of praises to God. They're songs of praising to God, recognizing and appreciating God's power, appreciating God's greatness. And many of the Psalms are intense prayers, asking God for forgiveness. And then many of the Psalms are of thanksgiving, being grateful to God for his personal concern. Aren't you glad this morning that God deals with you on a personal basis? And that his personal concern is that it help you mm -hmm. and it's there he dispatches his grace and his mercy in the midst of dealing with your personal issues. Mm -hmm. God is faithful and he is just. Yeah. And when we put our trust in him he quiets. He quiets our hearts. He brings peace. Come on, somebody. He brings peace to our heart when we put our trust in him. You might be going through turmoil. You might be going through hell. But when you trust in God, he'll bring peace in the midst of a stomach. God has been faithful not only in this age but throughout history. We can trust him in times of our trouble. And if you haven't had any trouble you stay here long enough, you're going to have some. Because trouble don't discriminate. 
It's got your name on it somewhere. So we can trust him in times of adversity. We can trust him, my brothers and sisters, when we are up. And then we can trust him when we're down in the valley. We can trust God when we are friendless. Finances are low. Health failing. We can still trust God. Because through it all, he is still faithful. And he will do what no other power can do. For his promise is, his promise is that when you pass through the waters, he said, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Even when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. He said the flames will not set you ablaze. This lets me know that the God we serve will not only fan the flames, but he'll put the flame out. Come on, somebody. Realizing that there is no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against it in judgment shall be condemned. This is our heritage. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and of their righteousness to him. When we feel powerless, and there are times, I don't know about anybody else, but there are times when you feel powerless, when you feel like you, you, you just can't do anything. You all you seem like all your energy, all your zap, all your get up and go is done got up and gone. When you feel powerless, God is right there to help us. His power is capable of overcoming any despair or pain that you and I might be going through. We can always pray that he'll deliver us, that he'll protect us, and not only that, but he will sustain us. God's capacity for restoring life is beyond our understanding. We don't understand it all. It is not for us to understand. But the psalmist went a little bit farther and he said, you don't understand it now, but you will understand it better by and by. The forest, the forest burned down and they are able to grow back up. Broken bones, they heal. Even grief is not a permanent conviction. Our tears can be seeds that will grow a harvest of joy. Why? Because God is able to bring good out of tragedy. The devil meaning it for bad. And then the God we serve turning it around for our good. Hallelujah. You ought to say turning it around for our good. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve this morning. When you and I are burdened by sorrow, know that your times of grief will end. Mm -hmm. And that you will again find joy. Mm -hmm. 
I like to say that uh, when you're going through, when you're being tried, and when you're being uh, tested, that it is only a test. That God is only a test. God don't test anyone, but He allows us to be tested. So He has allowed. What did He do to Job? He allowed him to be tested. But then realizes that no test, no test, it lasts forever. That there is a beginning. And then there is an end. We've been endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We don't know when our joy is coming. We don't know when the weeping is going to stop. All we know is that it's going to stop because God said it would stop. And if we wait patiently, God's great harvest of joy, his great harvest of joy is coming. And you ought to tell somebody that I might be sad today. I might be sick today. I might be in pain today. I might be in bereavement today. I might be going through today. But it's only a test and it's not going to last forever. All right. Thank you, Lord. When God gets through with me. Job said, when God gets through with me. Shall come forth. Hallelujah. And I shall come forth as pure gold. Hallelujah. Not tarnished gold, but as pure gold. I'm going to have a shine, a, a glitter, a brightness to me when I come forth. Families establish homes and watchmen guard the cities. But both of these are useless unless God is with them. Family without God can never experience a, a spiritual relationship unless God does the building. Oh, hear me somebody. Unless God does the healing. Hallelujah. You will not be healed if God doesn't do the healing. Hallelujah. And he's got multiple ways of doing it. He doesn't, you can't box him in. He doesn't do it just one way. Uh -huh. And I'm so glad this morning that we serve a God of variety. A God that will do things differently. He does it different for you and he does it different for me. He doesn't do it the same way for all of us. A city without God will crumble from evil. Without God, it will crumble from evil. Leaving God out of your life, uh, nothing you do will amount to anything. I like the way my mother used to say, nothing what you do will amount to a human being. Oh, hallelujah. Make God your highest priority and he will do the building. I know you thought you could build it on your own. You're a great architect. You, you're good at what you do, but you can't do it. This is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual act and you need help and only God can build a building. And unless God, unless the Lord builds the house, it's builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city. The watchman that guards the city guards in vain. God is not against hard work. Hard work, I believe God honors. Or he never would have said that if any would not work, neither should they eat. You know we have those that they call workaholics. However, working and avoiding family time could be just a cover-up for not trusting God to provide your need. So we need to trust God. God created the whole world. And then he took a rest. But we ought to be able to balance our work 
while trusting God all at the same time and rest while we trust in him. Rest in him while we are, while we are trusting him. Children are too often seen as liabilities rather than assets. But the Bible calls children a heritage of the Lord. He calls them a reward. We can learn valuable lessons from their inquisitive minds. For he that bear precious seed, our text says, shall come rejoicing and bringing his sheaves with him. Somebody said, the psalmist said, bring in, in the sheaves. Oh, hallelujah. And in my conclusion, as we look at verse uh, 6, uh, the promise of success. The word in verse 6, uh, oh, the word doubtless implies that the one who goes forth weeping and burning the precious seed will receive the harvest he or she anticipates. For the Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Remember that the harvest is the Lord's. Uh -huh. In Matthew 9 and 38, God never promised you and me that we will be great soul winners. Uh, getting people saved every time we, we share the gospel with them. He, he never promised us that. As a matter of fact, we, we can't save nobody. We can't even save ourselves. So, so, so God didn't promise us that. But his promise is that when we go, uh, when we go, do it his way and carry his message, then we'll have success. Because the word is successful in itself. Mm -hmm. God said, it will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what it was set out to do. Right. Uh -huh. Our success is determined by our obedience to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Here we are right back again, that word obedience. But if you want success, your success is determined by your obedience. To the Lord. Yeah. When we go and tell, we are successful. Mm -hmm. And then the text talks about the promise of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Satisfaction will bring about rejoicing. When you succeed in anything, if it's just fixing a delicious dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or or a beautiful cake or whatever or, or buying a, a, another outfit you, you rejoice you're happy about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the farmer who had labored and, and then reaped the harvest could look uh, upon his labor with satisfaction he looks upon it with satisfaction and great joy as he gazes out over the acreage He's looking at it. He's, he's being joyful over what he has planted and joyful even more when he sees it take root and start to sprout. The same is true for the Christian who witnesses for the Lord. We get satisfaction in knowing that the gospel of Jesus Christ has been shared and someone cries out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? When we witness, we will hear the well done of God's approval and it will ring deep down in the depths, the very depths of our soul. Saved through a testimony. Mm -hmm. That's satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Knowing that one more soul has been won for the kingdom of God. God has been glorified. Christ has been exalted. And the devil has been cheated. And if you want to cheat the devil, then go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. I know we're living in a pandemic, but you got telephones, you got texts, you got emails, you got all this at your hands. And I believe God, God, letting us experience.
experience this. See what we'll do with what we got. Uh -huh. What he has blessed us with. Yes. We will use, we will, we will put uses to what he has blessed us with. Yeah. We can still spread the news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Satisfaction of knowing that we will have the opportunity of spending eternity one of these days when he calls us home. Job declared in his text, all that I have gone through. You know, Job, everything that he had gone through, all the suffering and, and all the backbiting and everything that Job had gone through. Behold, this is the joy of his way. Job said, and out to the earth shall others grow. God will not cast away a perfect man, Job said, and neither will he help the evildoers till he fill my mouth with laughter. And one day he's going to fill my mouth with laughter. Job said, I know what I'm going through, but it's only a test and it's not going to last forever. But until he fill my, my mouth with laughter, I'm going to remain faithful unto him. And my lips one day will rejoice. Oh, yeah, I'm sad now. Oh, yeah, I can't gather now. Oh, yeah, I can't have Christmas like I'm used to. I can't have New Year like I'm But one day, he's going to fill my mouth with laughter. And he's going to fill my lips with rejoicing. This, too, shall pass. Hallelujah. They that hate thee mm -hmm. shall be clothed, mm -hmm. Job said, with shame. Yes. And the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Yes. One of Job's friends assumed, you know how we assume, one of his friends assumed that Job was trusting something other than God for security. Mm -hmm. So he pointed out that such support will one day collapse. One of mankind's basic needs. One of mankind's basic needs is security. We like to have, know that we are secure. You know, you know, State Farm got that thing, you know, going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like to know that we are secure. And people will do almost anything They'll do almost anything to, 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 to know that they are, that to feel secure. We try money. Try to, we feel if we get enough money, then we'll be secure. Then we go to possessions. We try to get everything we can other than money. If we get all the houses, the lands, the, the materials, then we will feel secure. Oh, perhaps I should go to Great College, Notre Dame, or maybe I should go to Wesley, or maybe I should go uh, to the higher college and the higher places of learning. And maybe if I get my PhD and my LAD or whatever that is. <laughs> or perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, maybe if I can get my relationships right. Maybe if I get the right, the right girl, the right wife the right, right friend, the right husband. Maybe if I can just get my relationships right, then I will be secure. Well, the news this morning is others have tried it. And it brought no security. What makes you think that you're going to try it and you're going to be secure? Oh, come on, somebody. Only God will give us yes. that lasting security. Mm -hmm. You want security that's going to last. Mm -hmm. You want security that's going to be there no matter what. Then you have to get God's security. Yeah. If you have a secure foundation mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. Feelings of insecurity cannot uproot you. Oh, come on, somebody. We live in a day where, where they don't, it doesn't take much.
for even Christians to be uprooted. So-called Christians. Oh, just a little bit. No, 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 no backbone at all. It don't take much. And they're easily uprooted, easily persuaded. But if you've got God on your side for real, if you're surely rooted and, 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 and grounded in the word of God, ha, 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 then, then, then feelings uh, will just be feelings. They will not uh, uproot you. Because you are rooted and grounded in the word of God. Hallelujah. We can, uh, what can, was always can be rooted, we can say, it is God that has rooted us and grounded us in him. So we come to the fact, we ask ourselves, what is it that can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What is it can make me whole? What can make me secure? Again, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. The psalmist said, oh, precious is the flow. What? The flow that makes me, it, it whitens me, it purifies me, it regenerates me. All oh, the precious blood that flows, that makes me white as snow. No other help I know. None but the blood of Jesus. Why, 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 preacher? Because through the blood, when the blood has been uh, 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 in a cavern over you and when you have been rooted and grounded in the blood of Jesus Christ, the psalmist said a change has come. A change has taken place. The psalmist said a change has come over me. God has done what? He's changed my life. And now I'm free. For he washed away all of my sin. And he made me whole, whole again. Hallelujah to God. He washed me white as snow. And I thank God that he changed my life. And now I'm sitting. Where do you sit? I sit right at his feet. Oh, 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 what a change in, in my life. So I give him praise this morning. I give him glory this morning for the change in my life. For every mountain that he brought me over. For every valley that he brought me out of. For every trial that he brought me through. I give him praise this morning. For this, I give him praise. Because he has done great things. He is doing great things. Even now in the season in which we are living and the things that we are experiencing that we have never experienced before, he is still doing great things. He's doing great things in the lives of his people. So don't let anything deter you from serving him, from giving him the glory, from giving him the praise. Because the reward that you will reap is unexplained. It cannot be explained down here. The only way you will get to know the reward and receive the reward is when you see Jesus. The psalm, the songwriter said, when I See Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then I'll say amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What? It's all over then. All I'm done. Right. Hey, yeah. I agree. It's done. So hold on and hold out. Yeah. Just a little while longer. Yeah. For he has done. Great and he's doing. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 We praise God and give thanks God for his word this morning. And yeah. as we Continue on, we don't like to close out without giving you an opportunity to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Paul said in Romans 10, 8 through 10, he said, what, what saith it? What do you say, Paul? He said, the word is nigh thee. Where is it? In your mouth. And it's in your heart. 
What is the word? The word is that of faith which we preach. That all you have to do is to confess it with your mouth. The Lord Jesus and I shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Why Paul? Because for with the mouth or with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, perhaps there is someone listening this morning by way of internet conference call that has decided to accept you as their personal Savior. God, you know all about them. You, you created them. You made them. You made them in your own image. So God, we give thanks, oh God, for that soul this morning. That woman, that boy, that girl. Oh God, whoever it might be, God, we give you thanks, God. Oh God, for that soul. We thank you, oh God, for those that are listening by way of internet and conference call. We pray, oh God, that you would touch, oh God, their lives and touch their hearts, their minds, and whatever it is that they stand in the need of God. You supply their every need according to your riches and glory. For we believe your word, God, that you are still doing great things among your people. And we say thank you. We praise you for the great things. We praise you for all things. For it is right to give you thanks and to give you the praise. So God, as we go forth, order our steps in your way and in your word that we might be the disciples of Jesus Christ that you are calling for in these last and evil days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Selection. There is not a friend yes, reminding us that Amen. Jesus knows yes. all about our yes. struggles yes. and He will guide us. Right. He's going to guide us and lead us through all of our struggles. We want to uh, solicit, but we want you to pray for Brother Donnie Shields. Uh, he's requesting prayer of healing. We want to also lift up the Jackson family uh, as uh, they go through their, I think, bereavement. Is that correct? Or he'll, Jack, he'll, 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 he's sick. Yes, Michael Jackson. We want to lift him up. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you again this morning as we come before you. We believe, oh God, your word that you said, God, uh, oh God, that with your stripes we are healed. So God, we lift up Brother Donnie in the shields and Brother Michael Jackson this morning. Oh God, oh God, uh, asking, oh God, that you would touch and heal their body, God. Oh God, any way you decide to do it, God, we give you the thanks and the praise. Yes, we do the medical, to the doctors, to medication or supernaturally God we give you the thanks and praise God oh God we pray oh God that they'll be able to hold on just for a little while longer God and believe in oh God that, that they hold on God that their healing and their deliverance will come so God increase their faith God that they may be able oh God to look up to you the author and the finisher of their faith Knowing, oh God, that is their faith. When their faith is activated, God, that you will do what no other power can do. So, God, we thank you. We give you praise this morning for your many, many blessings and for your healing power. But most of all, God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, God, that this is not the end, that this is just. 
address a dressing stage that we're just in the dressing room. And once we have completed our dress, that you will one day call us to be with you. But in the meantime, strengthen us for the journey. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. May he rest, rule, and abide with you. Both now henceforth and forevermore. Amen.